Hey everyone, and welcome to Cocktails and Classics, where each episode we force our friend Cameron, who hasn't seen many classic films, to watch one. During the movie, we'll be drinking cocktails inspired by the movie, and we're going to give you the recipe so you can try it at home. And afterwards, we're going to dissect the movie, play a couple games, and get Cameron's first impressions. So I'm Dylan, and joining me today are Cameron. Hey guys. Ben. Hey there. Carlos. How's it going? And Zach. Hey everybody. This week's movie is Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Cameron, you haven't seen this movie, so give me uh, your initial thoughts. What do you know about the film? This is actually one of the movies that I know a fair amount about, like not any of the plot or anything. I mean, honestly, in today's society, it's kind of hard to not know anything about Indiana Jones. I don't know any of the plot points or what happens in the movie. I assume he lives in the movie because there are others, uh, but that's it. That's kind of the beauty and the curse of these classic movies is that you you haven't seen them, but they're so ingrained in the culture and because it's inspired, you know, songs, it's inspired other movies, it's inspired television shows. So it's there's little pop culture references that you you'll learn. It's going to be cool to see this film. What what happens going in? What do you expect from the film, Cameron? Yeah, I expect it to be good. Like you said, it's very much one of people's like favorite action movies, uh, especially from that time. People have a lot of good memories of it. I will say one thing is I've actually seen an Indiana Jones movie, but it was The Crystal Skull, so I don't think it counts. To kick this thing off and get everybody in the right mood, I'm going to pass it over to Carlos, our makeshift bartender for this week's Inspired Cocktail. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well this episode. Uh, so we decided to make the Red Raider. So this drink, uh, I think, lends itself to Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, in such an authentic way. You know, this cocktail includes a lot of classic ingredients uh, that you would see in a lot of awesome cocktails. Simple to make, and our ingredients for today are one ounce of bourbon, half an ounce of triple sec, one ounce of lemon juice, two dashes of grenadine. Um, but here's what you're going to do. You are going to combine that bourbon. So bourbon of choice, I have triple sec. We're going to mix lemon juice and grenadine in a cocktail shaker with ice. Second, we are going to strain the contents of the shaker into a chilled cocktail glass and serve it. Now it is that simple, folks. And the color is awesome. So we have like a almost like a sunrise orangey color for our cocktail. So if you are a fan of bourbon drinks, if you're a fan of maybe drinks that have a little bit of sweetness, but also some tartness, this is going to be a great uh, cocktail for you to enjoy while we watch Raiders of the Lost Ark. So if you would like to check out the recipe from the Drink Kings, check out the show notes below. If you make one, send us a picture on Instagram at Cocktails and Classics Pod and use hashtag Cocktails and Classics. Or if Twitter is your thing, tweet us at Cocktails Class. We'd love to see what you make and hear your thoughts on how they turned out for you. And if you haven't seen the movie, sit back, sit on this week's cocktail, The Red Raider, and enjoy the show. There will be spoilers from here on out, folks, so heads up. Otherwise, continue on for our post-movie discussion and games. We are going to take a quick break and come back. This week, we watched Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, which released in 1981. 1936 archaeologist and adventurer Indiana Jones, played by Harrison Ford, is hired by the U.S. government to find the Ark of the Covenant before Adolf Hitler's Nazis can obtain its awesome powers. So what makes Indiana Jones a classic is it's one of the real like adventure films of the 80s that set way and made just a pop culture like icon out of Harrison Ford, really. But Spielberg already had some movies to his name at that time. And at, at what is it, 81? It's just a uh, like a perfect cacophony of all these elements. John Williams' score, too. Like, it just brings together so many great elements of that time period and just knocks it out of the park. It's a, an original adventure film, but it just takes those elements and just adds humor, adds quick wit, adds ad action. It's a great movie. Cameron, what were your initial reactions after watching the movie? Uh, I thought it was a good movie. I thought it was fun. Uh, one of the things that I picked up on uh, almost immediately was how impressive John Williams is. I'm a very big Star Wars fan. I think I've alluded to this in the previous podcast, but 
John Williams just completely, whatever the movie he's in, he just knocks it out of the park. He's so good. The music fits so well. And honestly, like, even though this is a great movie, his score is better than the movie. Like, <laughs> again, it's a fun movie, uh, action-packed, um, but his score is just so good. Um, so that's my initial thought. You can definitely tell it's an 80s movie. It's a little campy, uh, but I think that's what makes it fun. Uh, I think that movies nowadays can kind of get kind of too into themselves, and I don't think that this movie did that at all. Part of that, I think, is just Steven Spielberg's style. That's what makes Spielberg Spielberg is that, like, campiness, bringing that little bit of, like, humor, that little right at the beginning of the film when he's going to get the golden idol, there's the bit where he's... He's bent down, and he gets real close to the idol. And then he's, like, twiddling his fingers a little bit. And then it cuts to the the Spanish guy, and he's also twiddling his fingers. And you're just like, yes, yes. That, like, little <laughs> that little cut to that guy it just adds, like, a little bit of comedy, just tacks on that little extra bit, that little campy bit. And I think that's part of, like, the brilliance of Steven Spielberg. Yeah, I think his his ability to add levity into almost any situation um whether it be this movie or i mean really any like i said he kind of does a good job even with movies that seem to blend that horror thriller type genre he does a really good job of just adding something in to kind of lighten the mood of of the movie like jurassic park we talked about the alan faking the electric fence um just as kind of something to give you a little bit of light in what would otherwise be kind of a really action-y, adventure movie. Any memes or pop culture influence, Cameron, that you noticed right off the bat or you learned the origin of? Yeah, the scene, basically the first, like, ten minutes of the movie, I think, is very uh, pop culture heavy. Honestly, the rest of the movie isn't so much. Um, I actually didn't recognize most of the rest of the movie, except for the very end with the face melting. Um, but everything in the first, like, ten minutes, like, him replacing the idol with the bag of sand. Like, I don't know a single person that's over the age of, like, 10 that wouldn't be able to, like, tell you um, that they've seen that thing. And then also, like, the boulder chasing scene. I feel like that's very iconic. Um, I I thought that those would be, like, the end parts of the movie because they seemed so, like, dramatic. But they actually were in the very beginning, which was odd to me. Yeah, Spielberg was heavily influenced by two things in particular um, just before making indie. Um, one was the premiere of Legends of the Hidden Temple, and the other one was Temple Run. Is that a bullshit trivia fact? I feel like that is. Did, did uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple come out <laughs> in the 80s or 70s? Uh, you can look it up later. Right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, things that did or did not surprise you in the film, Cameron? Again, how early on the scenes that I recognized took place, I figured those would take place closer to the end um the campiness of the movie slightly surprised me a little bit the action scenes were a little bit i don't want to say dated but definitely you could tell they were 80s action scenes um which i was a little surprised at that they were so campy but i don't know why i kind of figured it would be like people talk it up as like a great movie and it is a great movie um in its own regard but it is still very campy like don't get me wrong star wars i love the movies very much very campy but I was expecting a little bit less so, and I think I got very similar doses of that. Is there any questions that you have left about the movie? No, I don't think so. Um, I think that it actually could wrap up in its own right. Uh, I think a lot of movies did this back in the day where they'd essentially kind of just wrap up, not essentially leave an opening for a sequel, um, but not rule it out either just in case, you know, like the original Star Wars movie stands on its own. Um, and I know I'm comparing a lot between these two movies, but for me, these movies are linked extremely because of Harrison Ford, obviously, but then the connection between uh, George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. And so it feels like to me that these movies are kind of connected because uh, they share very similar um, directing styles and influences and actors and stuff like that. And so... No, I don't think I have any questions about this particular one. I'm curious, does anyone else have any thoughts on the movie after seeing it for the second time or seeing it for maybe the third or fourth or nth time? Yeah, so I uh, this is only the second, maybe it's the third time I've seen this indie movie. 
I didn't grow up with the movies. Like I, I also grew up with Star Wars, was a huge fan of those movies, especially the original trilogy. I think I wore down the VHS tapes on those back when I was a kid. But I didn't see the Indiana Jones movies until um, probably college. I'm pretty sure I saw them out of order. I think I saw... I think I saw the Crystal Skull first, and then I was like, oh, wait, that's not the first one. <laughs> Went back and watched <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark. So it's definitely better than uh, than Crystal Skull. Really? But, you think um, it's better yeah, than Crystal it's Skull, my first huh? time. <laughs> you don't like it's aliens? my first time seeing... <laughs> <laughs> aliens was a great movie. Hopefully we get to review that one, too. <laughs> but yeah, uh, this was my first time seeing it in a few years. At least, and yeah, I enjoyed it. It's if if you take it for what it is, it's a great movie. It's a fun little adventure film. Harrison Ford's great in it. Um, it's always nice to watch every now and then. See, it's really interesting because growing up, we were more of an Indiana Jones family than a Star Wars family. Um, I think I've seen Indiana Jones. Well, I know for a fact I've seen a lot more than I've seen Star Wars. Um, what? <laughs> oh yeah. We we had the playset growing up. We had the hat. It came with a little whip. The whole the whole thing. Um, I don't. I want to say you got that from an adult store, not a kid's store. The whip. <laughs> the whip. Yeah, maybe you found your maybe you found your parents' whip. Yeah, I, did, yeah you found did it come collection? with the hat, or was there just a hat there? You know no, what? It, it came with with the hat. <laughs> it came in a box oh. with packaging that said Indiana Jones on it. Not a toy for kids. Was there a woman on the box? No. Oh. Okay. Oh, my gosh. If anyone else so, wants any relationship advice, uh, contact us at Pod <laughs> on Instagram or on Twitter at Cocktails Class. Maybe we'll get uh, sponsored by Lovers Only and we can start selling hats and whips and stuff <laughs> and doing ads for those. Adore me. Oh, my God. Right around this time, Harrison Ford, uh, Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, 1997, uh, Apocalypse <laughs> Now... 1979. Did I say 97? Um, what the fuck? Do I? <laughs> I just completely got cut off in the middle of what I was talking oh, about. Go ahead. What the fuck? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. What? Yeah. I started talking about how I enjoyed the movie in my childhood, and you guys turned into a story about my no. mom and dad's sex life. We got life. everything we needed. And, then, and then all, of a sudden, all of a sudden, Dylan just jumps into the next fucking segment. So oh, how did Ben end up being the dirty one on this podcast? What? All right, Ben, whenever you're ready. Well, I'm trying to find this fucking playset on Google. So I can, yeah, I can I'm post sure it, it exists. It's fucking real. Mm-hmm. Yeah, growing up, we were definitely much more of an Indiana Jones family. Uh, we watch the movies a lot. The thing I enjoy most about them is that they're just fun movies. As a kid, you can enjoy kind of the action and adventure aspects of it. And as you get older, there is kind of more story behind it i guess as a kid you don't kind of pick up on it overall i think uh looking back some of the some of the effects in that don't hold up super well uh which is to be expected but overall i think the story and the acting and everything else still still holds strong looking at imdb right now uh harrison ford was in star wars a new hope 79 he's in apocalypse now 80, Empire Strikes Back. 81, Raiders of the Lost Ark. 82, Blade Runner. This man only makes bangers. He was a machine. He was the hottest commodity from 77 to 82. Uh, I have a question for everyone. So, choosing your way to die, would you rather have your face melt, your face contract on itself, (laughs) <laughs> or your head explode completely. Uh, which one would you choose? <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with explosion. I feel like that one is the least painful. When I was watching the movie, I feel like uh, the people who had their face melt definitely knew it was happening. But the guy that had his face explode had a surprised look on his face, but then his um, head immediately exploded. So I think that's the least painful. So I'm going to go with that one. So you're looking for the like quick way out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't want to go out like a badass. Right, I want to go out with just fucking explosion out of my head. I, I think I would go face melt because how badass would you look as your face is just like melting and you're on fire, like a real life Ghost Rider, and then only only if people got to see you though. Yeah. That's true. If your if well, your face you melts in the woods and no one's around to see it, did it really melt? 
Yeah, and he had his eyes closed the whole time. <clears throat> Nobody actually saw that Nazi face. It melt. was captured on film. There were two guys filming it. They also died. True, though. and it did go through the camera. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we're <laughs> did wrong. Did everybody right. else watching that broadcast die too? <laughs> there was no broadcast. Was it just recorded? It was 1930s. <laughs> they were in the middle of like Tunisia in like 1937. Okay, but we're dealing with like they were, okay. they were listening to it on radio. <laughs> Walter Cronkite okay, comes. Okay, sure, on. but at the same time, this we just, just saw people's face melt from them opening a box. So I think we can suspend a little bit of our disbelief here. Well, it was a religious box. Which, okay. actually, kind of interesting about the Ark of the Covenant. Um, so, uh, a lot of times people were shocked or electrocuted when they touched the Ark. Um, and it became the rumor that it was the power of God. Another popular rumor about that is that the way they carried the Ark of the Covenant was with um, wool. So the wool on the Ark generated static. And so when people would go to touch it, Without using the wool, they it had built up enough static electricity to kill them, which is also a myth because I don't think that's you can actually build up enough static electricity to do it. But that is a very popular myth as to why uh, when people would touch the ark, they were they were electro- electrocuted. Yeah, the MythBusters tried that. I was going to say I was. They tried to <laughs> they tried to rebuild an ark and they uh, they couldn't end up killing anybody. Without like, I think they ended up hooking up like a massive car battery to it just to explode one of those dummies. But uh, yeah, they couldn't actually get anything more than like a little carpet shock. As a weird tie-in, the Ghost uh-huh. or the MythBusters guy, not Ghostbusters, uh, MythBusters guys actually worked on like Star Wars and stuff, right? I think that's right. I think they did a lot of the practical effects for Star Wars, if I remember correctly. Adam Savage and Jamie yeah. Heineman. Mm-hmm. Heineman. Heineman, mm-hmm. not Heineman. Uh, Okay. Okay. It's, it's, it's Heineman. It's Heineman. Okay. It's Heineman. Okay. It's Jamie Heineman. <laughs> He's the walrus one, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, Carlos. Face melt, head explosion, face crush. Uh, I probably I'm I'm gonna go with explosion only. Like here's why. Because I mean, given the amount of cheese in my diet. If I melted, I would probably just be like a jar of like Tostito cheese sauce at the end of it. <laughs> it would it would take it would forever. take a long time. <laughs> it would be a long time, and let me tell you, it would be like one of those like fondue fountains. I feel like it would just be like kind of like f- that. <laughs> to be fair, though, it would probably smell real good while you're melting. <laughs> I, I guess. I guess. Someone the, grab yeah, some chips. Get in there. <laughs> right. Grab some yeah, Tostitos yeah, chips. Just... And get in there. <laughs> right. Right. As yeah. As as everyone else is uh, exploding and melting around me. Oh, you know. Don't forget to try the the dip on your way out. Don't don't forget to try the Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> Zach. Yeah, I would go melt. I'd go face melt. It's just the most badass way to go out. You think so? I feel like I feel like an explosion is the most badass way to go out, rather than a face melt. Uh, go back, watch that frame by frame. That guy's eyeballs boiled; they turned white. Look like a. You ever order a whole fish at a restaurant? I don't like fish, so that's a no. No. You ever well, seen a boiled sheep's head? I I don't think I've actually <laughs> boiled a, a sheep's head. You ever seen a grown man naked? <laughs> that's what I was going to say. You ever been to a Turkish prison? Gladiators. <laughs> 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 oh my god. I was trying to remember what he said. I was trying to remember what he fucking said. We should do an episode about Airplane. <laughs> we should. Oh, episode two. Listen, yeah. Cocktails and Classics. Apple, Spotify, Google. So I'm going to hand it over to Zach, and he's going to give us a little quiz. Hey, everybody. Put together a quick little game of trivia for you. This time, we're going to make it a little different than the previous two episodes. We're going to go three rounds. First one I have for you is true or false. Uh, Sam Neill was originally considered for the role of Indy. However, plans fell through, and he would go on uh, to instead play a hat-wearing character in another Spielberg movie, Dr. Alan Grant in Jurassic Park. A little tie into our, our Virgin episode, our, our maiden voyage. So true or false? I'm going to say true, because I don't know. what Was Sam Neill popular then? I don't, I don't know, because Jurassic Park was until 93. All right, kick it over to Ben. True or false? I'm going to say false. Um, I know when they were doing the casting for Indiana Jones originally, 
Uh, I believe Tom Selleck was one of the uh, leading um, actors for the role. I haven't heard about Sam Neill, so I might be wrong on this one, but I'm going to say that's false. Yeah, I, I'm going to say false on that one, too, um, just because I, I didn't feel like Sam Neill was, was that big yet. So, yeah, I'm going to go false on that. Yeah, Cameron, bring it home. Sam Neill originally considered for the role of Indy. True All right, false? frankly, I didn't know who Sam Neill was until you told me he was that guy in Jurassic Park. So, <laughs> honestly, I'm going to say true because he does dig up dinosaurs in Jurassic Park as well. So, I'm going to say true. Yeah, based on his amazing archaeology skills, he was originally considered for the role of yes! Indiana Jones. Um, didn't work out with his timeline. Uh, also, George Lucas had somebody else in mind that he wanted for the film. I'll let you figure out who that might have been. All right, so Dylan and Cam each have a point. Uh, ben and Carlos have to play a little catch-up. So question two. Let's see how much uh, you guys trust Ben. Which actor was originally cast as Indiana Jones? Harrison Ford? Tom Selleck? Or Jeff Bridges? Let's, uh, let's go Ben first, because I get a feeling I know what his answer is going to be. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, Tom Selleck on this one. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't, I don't really know. Was was Tron out at that time? Wasn't Je- Jeff Bridges was in the original Tron, right? Um, yes. Okay. So, uh, I'm. Gonna, I guess I'll trust Ben. Honestly, even though he got the previous one wrong, I'll trust Ben and say true. Oh, sorry, fuck. There is no true. That's not an <laughs> option. Say Tom Selleck. I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't do that here. <laughs> I, I think I'll go. I think I'll go with Ben on this one as well. Um, I I really have no idea oh. like whatsoever. So yeah. Bandwagon. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna bandwagon. bandwagon. And, yeah, I'll probably. Uh, it's it's getting awfully full. Can I get all of these extra points I'm accumulating? Or just the or or the negative. You, you might be bringing yeah, down the, the ship. Points if, if you steer us wrong. But no, I'll uh, I'll go with. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that on this one. Same thing. I'm gonna go dark horse here and say that it was Harrison Ford originally. He's he's the main man. He was popular at the time. He was perfect for the role. Harrison Ford. Final answer. He was huge, arguably biggest uh, movie star at that point in time with all the movies that Dylan listed off. Unfortunately, oh. it was actually Tom Selleck who was cast as Indiana Jones. Things fell through. He had a prior commitment doing Magnum P.I., so he, he couldn't uh, fulfill his role as Indiana Jones. And George Lucas was like, hey, uh, I got this great guy who's in uh, the biggest franchise of all time right now. Let's put him in Indiana Jones. And that was Harrison Ford. Thanks, Ben. There is actually um, footage out there of Tom Selleck dressed as Indiana Jones, mustache and all. I feel like Tom Selleck has the biggest privilege of all time, and that is being able to grow proper facial hair on your upper lip. Like, can you imagine if Tom Selleck could not grow facial hair? He wouldn't be nearly as popular. Come on. So, uh, score recap. Uh, Cam, Ben, and Carlos are tied at one point, and Dylan has two points. He's in the lead. So, to bring it all home, we have a true and false, or true or false question. Uh, due to the uh, out-of-control airplane, the scene where they had the, the big muscular guy and the mustache fist-fighting Indiana Jones, where you think that they're, either one of them is going to get pushed into the propeller at any second, uh, due to that out-of-control airplane, Harrison Ford tore a ligament in his right knee during filming. I will go true once again. Well, no he, wasn't he flying that plane? That's a totally different thing. But I, okay, would it help if I uh, if I told you that Harrison Ford <laughs> insisted on doing all of his own stunts for the movie? Maybe, maybe. So he's like the he's like the eighties Tom Cruise. Um, he did get injured in a plane later in life. Yeah, so, that was much later though. <laughs> yeah, yes. So he just has yeah. very bad luck with planes. I'm going with. But true. it was also an out of control airplane. I'm going with true. I stand there. I'm going to go three for three. It's true. Oh. All right, Ben, what do you think? Uh, i got to play the game, and my only way to tie is for Dylan to be wrong and me to be right. So I'm going to go ahead and say that's false. Okay. I see where you're at. Uh, Carlos, tell us what you think. True or false? I'll say true because I'm just drawing on, I don't know, the memory of hearing somewhere that they had to come back and like reshoot the scene. As I, and I don't, I don't, I don't know why I'm, I'm thinking that I heard that somewhere, but I, I think just on that, that pure, you know, out there memory, I'll say true. I'm gonna go 
with this is a trick question and I'm gonna say false because it he did injure himself but it was not in his right knee it was in some other one like his left knee or something like that so trick question false I gotcha okay so unfortunately we have a three-way tie between Dylan Cam and Ben that was indeed false Cameron was right on the nose he he tore a ligament in his left knee his cruciate <laughs> ligament. can't fool me hopefully I said that right Damn it. <laughs> so, as the quick tiebreaker, I'm going to do this on the ball. It's going to be whoever gives me the answer first gets the point. True or false, this movie has grossed a quarter of a billion dollars domestically. False. false. All right, Cameron got it. <laughs> yes! The guy who has an entire podcast devoted to <laughs> not knowing these classic <laughs> movies is on the leaderboard with one win. Yes! Awesome. Thanks, everybody, Man. for playing. Hope you had fun at home. Um, Stick around next week. We'll come back. I think we're going to keep this sort of format. Unless you guys don't like the episode, then we'll change it. But I hope we keep it. <laughs> Today's episode is brought to you by Audible. How it works is every month, members get one credit to pick any title, plus two Audible originals from a monthly selection. Audible has a free, easy-to-use app that allows you to download titles and listen offline at your convenience. Dylan and Ben, what are your experiences with Audible? So I used the Audible free trial a couple years ago. Um, and I've gone back to it since. Uh, I listened to Pet Cemetery by Stephen King, and I really like it when I'm driving on like long road trips. I used it to listen to one of James Elroy's uh, L.A. quartet novels, The Big Nowhere. I would definitely recommend it to anyone on the go, uh, whether it's just driving to work or for long flights. It's great. You can you know listen to something on your phone, connect it to Bluetooth. You get to work, log into your work computer, and listen up. To start your free 30-day trial, go to audibletrial.com slash cocktailsandclassics, all lowercase. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash cocktails, A-N-D, classics. After your free trial is up, it'll cost $14.95 per month. However, there are no commitments, and if you can't decide what to listen to at that particular month, that's okay. You can always roll your credits over for up to a year. So I have here some reviews that I propagated, irrigated. I don't know the word. What am I trying to say? Collated. You did not irrigate them. You did not irrigate them. I have them, some. I just found them on a website. You found them. If you if you irrigated them, I don't want to hear them. <laughs> I have some reviews here that I pulled off the internet from a glorious internet movie database, uh, varying dates, and I just want to know Cam's. And anybody's opinion, really, on some of these wonderful reviews. So number f- first, number first, uh, <laughs> from <laughs> from A plus Bithok four on May two thousand five. He he gave this movie a four out of ten. He titled it lame. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> the review goes: Most people give this movie a ten out of ten because they don't consider the movie but rather how happy they were when they discovered it as a child. In 2005, it has become obviously outdated. The script is quite bad, and the acting is even worse. Harrison Ford obviously should have worked his acting better, which he happily did since that movie. I am sorry, I cannot just keep on lying about this movie. This is for your kids, but in no way should it be put among masterpieces. IMDb is a website about movies, not about cult and self-proclaimed nerds or geeks. You have to determine how good is a movie according to artistical criteria, neither to your gregarious instinct nor to your, quote, attitude. I read that word for word, just so you know. I did not butcher it that bad. Right. Uh, My initial impression is I want to imagine that this guy was just going through life constantly lying about this movie to all his friends. Like he was like, people were going up to him. You know, in various phases, and was like, "Hey, what do you think? What do you think of Indiana Jones? Do you like that movie?" And he's just like sitting there, trying not to burst out at these people and be like, "Yes, it's a great movie, ten out of 10. And then like one day, he just snaps and is like, "You know what I got to do? I have to write an IMDb review to really let out my frustrations, and then to finally get it off my right. chest. And then and then he does it. Um, and finally, Drops his whole load right on IMDb. <laughs> and then finally, just lets it all out. To the, for the internet to see and for us to hear. Um, but, I, yeah, I don't know. I think that's funny. It's just funny when people try and be overly pretentious in their reviews, and they're like, Indiana Jones, shit movie, zero out of zero. Don't ever watch it. Sucks. Is it? 
Harrison Ford so bad. <laughs> I don't even know why he tries. He's it, clearly not a good actor. International superstar in the 80s. Terrible actor. No, zero out of ten would recommend. You know what? I should throw in Gregarious there, too. <laughs> Gotta use this word. I just learned it the other day on dictionary.com, but here we go. What does it mean? Uh, no, that that sounds like he typed that review up in Microsoft Word and then hit thesaurus <laughs> to make sure yeah. it sounded smarter. He just wrote bad 20 times. It's like, Harrison Ford, bad, acting bad, didn't like it. It was so bad. And then he spent the majority of his time, double-click this word, right-click, dictionary.com. All right, gregarious. There we go. This is Terrible. good. This is looking good. I will say that I'm surprised with that scathing review. He gave it a four. Well, I would have thought that he'd give it lower than a four out of ten. Well, I have a one out of ten review here for you. Ooh, Cam. one out of ten. Oh. Wow. What's the username uh, though? Give Underworld username. rocks one. So he's a big U <laughs> ball fan. An under- <laughs> Underworld fan. Yes. Fan uh, of the Underworld movies. Titled, dated, awful, especially the action scenes from May well, 2017. I don't entirely disagree on the action, but let's hear it. Warning: spoilers. Ever since I became a movie fan, my taste for dazzling action has been cultivated from movies sorry, Underworld? by movies <laughs> from the late 1990s up to the present, such as The Matrix Trilogy, Spider-Man, X-Men, Blade, and the awesome Underworld franchise. Oh my god, oh, he no. mentions the Underworld franchise I'm telling in you, dude, he loves you both. He been, loves it. Having been used to... Fine, what? Uh, having been used to these movies... He, he didn't use that right. Uh, my standard is high. If something looks fake, I will think of what Sir Ridley Scott said about fake scenes. Oh I don't God. fucking believe it. Today, I finally finished watching this so-called classic, the first installment of the Indiana Jones franchise. It almost put me to sleep twice. The story is slow-paced, but the problem is the movie never picks up the pace. It drags on and on. The opening scene in the cave with the spiders were interesting, and that's it. Gradually, I began sleepwatching. The movie never engages. There was never a moment when the protagonist was in grave danger. Yeah, he got trapped in a tomb. Whatever. When I woke up, I was not surprised that he managed to get himself out. The movie was that predictable. Do not think that I cannot appreciate old movies. I like the 1979 classic, Alien. That movie does not look dated at all. Even seen today, due to the way it was shot. Raiders of the Lost Ark is god-awful. It looks dated. So is Star Wars. (laughs) What? Wow. Wait, 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 wait. Time out. At the end of he the review, it says, there. so is Star Wars? <laughs> yes. So is Star Wars. Dude, parentheses. Fuck nineteen seventy seven. What's his, what's his username? <laughs> Underworld Rocks 1. Hey, listen to me. Underworld Rocks 1. If you somehow, somehow end up listening to this, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Like, it's so funny. Like, he's like, oh, the awesome underworld franchise like go and look at the reviews of those movies they're not that good like come on and like the matrix does like i haven't seen it um i've seen bits and pieces and we might do an episode on that later but like as far as i know that movie also looks dated and that movie's not from that long ago so i don't know i i don't put any yeah that's weird i don't put any stock into someone that thinks that underworld is an awesome franchise i have two things um, one is that he said, I finally today finished this movie. Maybe that's why it it felt slow to you, because you stopped fucking watching <laughs> the movie so many times that you had to say that you finally finished it. And and number two, I woke up surprised that he, he got out of everything unharmed. Hmm, is it because you know there's a trilogy of movies? <laughs> like, <laughs> if I were to look back and... and know that there's three movies of the matrix and i fall asleep during it and at the end i'm like oh huh neo is still alive (laughs) huh that's weird no i know he's gonna be still alive they made two more movies about it it's like watching star wars episode one and being pissed that anakin's still alive at the end you're (laughs) like oh my god he's still alive i knew it i knew that he would have plot armor it's like well yeah he has six movies what do you expect man I want to apologize right now to Lynn Wiseman, director of Underworld. He is not Yubol. Uh, Yubol did Blood Rain, which has a 2.3 out of 10 on IMDb. Underworld has a 7 out of 10, though. So, you know. Wow, okay, that's not as bad as I would have thought. I'm not trying to shit on the Underworld movies. I've never seen them, but 
It's just like when you think of like quintessential action movies, Underworld doesn't exactly pop up to the top, you know? No, not at all. I would definitely say Indiana Jones is on that list, but I think he's just jealous, honestly. He's just salty. So with the NFL draft coming up soon, I thought we might try a little draft. We're just going to pick one person. Uh, This is your Beer Olympics drinking team. This being cocktails and classics, you got to have a drinking team. I feel like I know who wa- who's going to go first round. Obviously, uh, I did a little a little name pick beforehand, so I do know who's going to go in order. And Ben, I feel like you will know. I know exactly who you're going to pick with your first overall pick, Ben. Yes. Oh no! no come on. Pick. There is there is a clear there's a first clear obvious number one. Like if you're in the NFL draft and like yeah, this dude's on the board. Like well, not dude, but you know this person's on the board. You're obviously picking them. This is the Joe Burrow yeah. of Indiana Jones. No, no, no. This is the Chase Young of the NFL draft. For being relevant, boys, this is the John Elway of <laughs> draft picks. This is the <laughs> can't miss, not gonna retire. Because of poor offensive line play, this is this is the can't miss prospect, and it is Marion Ravenwood. Oh my God! Indiana wow, what Jones, a stunner! Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, that's the obvious pick. Yeah. Oh, surprise me! With- surprise me so much, Ben. Oh my God. So who's number two? Because obviously we knew that they were going number one. Number two is Cam. Woo. You oh, yes. get to choose next. Uh, I don't know the name of this actor or character, but whoever she was drinking with in the first scene we introduced to her, I want that guy. <laughs> drunk guy number one. Yeah, <laughs> what, I don't drunk know. Guy I, one. I, I would need to see what his character is listed as in the credits, but <laughs> I'm picking that guy. Like He still held it together until the very end, and if she's not on the board, I definitely want the guy who almost beat her. So I'm going to go with him. Next... Yeah. On the list, it's going to be Zach. Perfect. I actually am going to take the best pick in the whole draft. You guys blew the first two that picks. That can't be right. Give me my boy Salah. Ooh. <laughs> Solid pick. Yeah. Solid pick. It, is he seen drinking alcohol at all in the movie? Uh, when they're no, at his house? Or? But even if he can't put a ton back, we're going to have a great time. He was the uplifting spirit in this movie. We're going to hang out. We're going to bro down. We're going to have a good Can time. Can you remind me which one Sala is again? He is the one that helps Andy break into the Well of Souls and the map room. Ah, uh, okay. Gotcha. He's holding yeah. the rope. Understood. Just a reminder, one kiss from Marion and Sala was acting drunk off of his ass. So could you imagine what actual liquor is going to do? We'd have a good time, though. We'd have a great time. Uh, and I'm actually next. Sorry, Carlos. You're going to have to bring up the rear. I hope you have a solid pick. I feel like the next obvious choice is actually Belloc. Because he is seen drinking alcohol, but he's a, a bit of a lightweight. I feel like he's feeling a little, he's feeling some type of way when him and Marion are, you know, toss like four back or something, you know. So I'm going to come with the the sleeper, the Tom Brady sixth round goat pick here. I'm going to go. <laughs> Belloc did at least, though, say that the liquor they were drinking was made by his family. So... Sleeper pick when you, the guy's family actually makes alcohol. Sleeper pick. I'm going the monkey. I'm going for the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> that dude ate one or like five poison dates and was gone. I don't know if you want to pick. Yeah, that. but evil if monkey, anybody way, right? took five, yeah, he was an evil s- monkey, right? If we're being clear, if anybody monkey. took five, he was a Nazi dates, monkey. They'd be dead. I think the monkey That's can true. toss him back. I'm going for the monkey. So you're so you're re- revising your pick. You're gonna pick the monkey. Over yes, yes. Over the, He's my okay. Tom Brady pick. Carlos. All right. Bring it up <laughs> Who's the your rear. Pick? Okay. Here we go. Jock with the plane, and here's why. The dude obviously flies around with a snake in his plane. He's got to be a crazy drinker. Like he, he like he's got like the Yankees cap, you know, twisted to the side. Like I bet you he could throw back like real hard. He probably yeah. I feel like he would he would drink a lot of the characters under the table. You got to be shit faced to be hanging out with snakes like that in your plane. It's a good point. It's like yeah, this is just my snake. And I mean, like he he might have been like drunk flying that plane. I don't know. He just seems like the type of dude to keep a flask underneath his seat of that plane, and you know, just take a few swigs as he's kind of you know pulling off. Like he like he's been down that road before where he's been chased off of or chased out of the jungle, and so I feel like 
feel like you need some uh, you need some polls if that's your life. <laughs> Before the movie, those of us who have seen it wrote down our ratings based off of our memories and nostalgia. And now we will get a revision on those ratings now that we've freshened our memories a little bit and we'll also get Cam's uh, first time view rating. So I gave the film like an 8 out of 10. It It's one of those classic films that I really love. The action scenes, a little dated, but they're just like, they, they're kind of on the edge of your seat. Spielberg gives you that little extra bit here and there. Um, I probably would bring it down a little bit probably a 7.5 out of 10 uh, if I really had to change it. Um, I mean, obviously it's iconic, but it has it has been done before and will be done again. So going into the movie, uh, I also gave Raiders an 8 out of 10. Uh, I definitely view this movie a lot with nostalgia-colored glasses, um, with there being a lot of adventure and and action and stuff like that that really kind of keeps the movie going after a rewatch i would probably bump it down to a six and a half it does get kind of dated at times uh the action sequences aren't as enjoyable as i remember them being the special effects don't hold up as well as a lot of other spielberg and lucas movies do but I will say overall it's still an instant classic and in about six weeks I will probably also give it another 8 out of 10 again just through nostalgia colored glasses. Carlos? Before watching the movie I gave it a 7. 7 just because of yeah the action sequences a little dated but I still love like just the the adventure of the movie and um, you know the witty banter and the development of like the character like he's just like he's such an iconic character and knowing that like it only in my i mean in my opinion only gets better over the franchise you know after the movie i'm still gonna stick with a seven just because i know that i rate the other movies probably at eight or nine um raiders i would definitely yeah i'm gonna leave it at a seven just because i know how how much better what the franchise gets uh before watching the movie um i gave it a five out of ten don't have any real nostalgia for this this movie. I was like I said, I was a Star Wars family growing up. After watching it again, I'm gonna stick with that a five out of ten. Um, there's not a ton in this movie that does it for me. Harrison Ford is really good and John Williams is really good, which is why I give it a five. Um, but there's other action adventure movies that I think are better. Uh, this movie's got a bunch of plot holes in it uh, that I just can't get past. Um, so a, a fun movie. It's a little campy. Um, but that's to be expected with a Spielberg movie. Throw it on for the kids, throw it on for nostalgia, but if you didn't see it as a kid, I don't think you need to see it now. Sorry, Ben. I'm going to give this movie a 7 out of 10. I agree with many of Zach's points, and I will say that without John Williams' score, I think it's a 6 out of 10. It was a fun movie, though. It was I was entertained through it. My benchmark for a lot of movies is, was I waiting for the movie to be over? And the answer is no. So I think... This is a, you know, 7 out of 10. Cameron, you gave it a 7 out of 10, but would you recommend this movie to anyone? Yeah, I'd recommend it. It's a great, fun movie. The plot has holes in it. It's campy. Some of the fight scenes are rough. The score is good. It's a fun movie. Harrison Ford is fun to watch in it. I'd recommend it. I think it definitely lives up to its classic standards, even if there are movies that do what it does and honestly does them better. You heard it here first. It is a classic. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah. We are the first people Hot to ever take. say that this movie's a classic movie. Hot take. Indiana Jones is a classic. Confirmed right now. No, here. I think the hot take is Zach giving it a 5 out of 10. That is very, That's definitely very a hot spicy. take. That is a spicy yes. take. 5 out of 10 is a very spicy take. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for listening to this week's episode of Cocktails and Classics on Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Once again, I'm Dylan, here with Ben, Cameron, Zach, and Carlos. And don't forget to rate and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Check us out on Instagram, at Cocktails and Classics Pod. If you're into Twitter, reach us at Cocktails Class. 
post, send, and tag us in your drink photos or your movie recommendations, and use the hashtag cocktails and classics. Share us with your friends, and until next time, watch responsibly. Thank you.